they turn out to be an increasing issue, I think. Not just with the United States, but, but with other trade partners as well, and also within the European Union. So you're, I think you're right in, in saying that the surplus is, uh, is, is becoming toxic. And also within Germany, uh, many argue now that we need to do something about it uh, with the purpose of lowering it. It tends out to be a liability rather than an asset, really. So th that's absolutely fascinating. I didn't actually expect you to agree with me, sir, so that's amazing. So what can Germany actually do? What should it do? Uh, is this about stimulating domestic spending or, or what, sir? So you, you see a, a current account surplus amounting to 8% of GDP is equivalent to capital leaving the country uh, in that order of magnitude. And, and that is a problem. We, we would like to see more local investment, uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, government-led investment. Uh, sure, there are, you know, there are gaps in, in public infrastructure, schools need to be renovated and so on and so forth. But uh, w what we are worried about really is that uh, Germany is not attractive enough for uh, corporate investment. And here, I think the government needs to take action. We need, we need a step towards a modernization of the rules that govern the, uh, the German economy. We need to deregulate. Germany is not uh, ready for, you know, technical and technological change. Uh, we're blocking off a lot of uh, innovations. And that uh, uh, puts a break to investment. So there is, you know, a lot that the government can do, except, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, and not only increasing public investment. That's what many uh, argue for, but we think, uh, you know, there are more urgent uh, things to do in the area of uh, deregulation, really. Gabriel, I want to get a little bit further into the trade spat with you because the Chinese are suggesting perhaps the Europeans need to have an alliance with them to try and counteract some of the trade measures from Donald Trump. The Americans have uh, effectively tried to have a, an isolationist policy where they've been very uh, open to global trade in recent years. So is it time for the Europeans to consider the proposal put forward by the Chinese to try and counteract some of the measures from the Americans this time? Yes, I think the European Union needs to, needs to form a coalition with the other WTO members. Uh, the, uh, the trade policy that we see coming out from the White House these days uh, is, uh, is, is attacking, in a sense, all WTO members, uh, and uh, they should stand together in fighting this off. I think uh, uh, the paradoxical situation that we are in now is that um, we all know that many you know, systemic issues in the world economy uh, come from China or, or from Russia, uh, and they are not really really uh, between uh, Europe and the United States. Yet we find Europe uh, in, in, you know, in search for allies and coalition partners um, you know, in China, in, you know, in, in many other places in the world where we actually have issues with two. So that's quite a paradoxical situation, but I think the, top, the, the priority number one now must be uh, to defend the multilateral system and uh, to, you know, to engage in a coalition with all the other WTO members that have similar interests. That means the U.S. would be quite alone uh, in, in, in this trade war. Are you saying that Europe has been too hasty turning the Chinese down then because they wanted some form of a joint statement, offered improved access to the Chinese market if there was an alliance, but the Europeans said, no, thank you, we, we don't want that. So has Europe been a little bit too quick to dismiss the overtures from China? Yes, yes, I do think uh, I do think they have been too quick. Uh, it's it's important uh, to you know to to seek an alliance with all those who, in principle, at least, agree. Uh, that the WTO is an important institution. We have very serious concerns about uh, the, United, the United States, the U.S. administration, to actually move out of the WTO the way that they are handling uh, this crisis and the way they are, they are also explaining their tariffs is, is clearly directed against the WTO. So I think the top, the top priority now must be to defend the multilateral system. And then, of course, we also need to modernize uh, the multilateral system. Here is where, of course, uh, you know, differences between the European Union and China will matter, because China has a very different long-term view uh, of how the multilateral trade system should be organized. And, uh, but, but I think right now, in this crisis, uh, the other 163 members of the WTO should stand together and, and fan this off. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.